Welcome to the Phoenix DMA YouTube channel. In this video, we are going to cover the physical and software setup for the sixth generation Deakin HDMI Fuser. All of our DMA hardware can be purchased on either our website or on our Amazon store. At the time of the video, all of our products ship from the precious United States of America. Let's get cracking. If you purchase your fuser from our Amazon store, your box will contain the following. First, you have two HDMI cables. These cables are rated 4K at 60 Hertz. As you can see, these cables are beautifully packed inside of plastic bags with the dust covers on the connectors. Next, we have the Phoenix DMA support card. This version of the support card is specific to fuser setup and installation. On the back of the support card, you will find our Discord, our support email, and our support ticket webpage. On the front, you will find a QR code that will take you to the written version of this video as well as the software downloads. Next, we have this gorgeously designed small white box. Inside the box, you will find the power cable for the fuser. And lastly, we have the fuser itself. The fuser is coated in an absolutely stunning light blue color. As you can see, I wore my best gloves today in order to match up perfectly with my Daichin fuser. Let's go over some key features of this absolute unit of hardware we have here. On the front left of the fuser, we have the power button and the status lights. Shockingly, the power button is used to turn the fuser on and off. The D1 light represents the power state. Sometimes when the fuser is off, this light will be faded or dim red. When the fuser is powered on, this light will be bright red. The D2 light represents fusion. If you are actively combining your two displays, this light will be bright red, otherwise this light will be off. H2 represents the status of the connection associated with the HDMI 2 port. H1 represents the status of the connection associated with the HDMI 1 port. Moving on to the front right. Now, K1 is used to cycle through your resolution settings. K2 is used to adjust the intensity of the overlay. The default setting is 0, while the max is 20. K3 resets the overlay intensity to zero. K4 is used to enable or disable fusion, as well as alternate between HDMI 1 and 2. Now let's move on to the rear side of the fuser. All the way to the left, we have the output port. This is the port that will connect to your main monitor. During the setup, it is best to only use one monitor to create less confusion. Any monitor besides the fuser output monitor should be unplugged from power during the setup. Input 1 is where you will connect your main PC HDMI cable. It is recommended to connect from the GPU your main PC to this port. Input 2 is where you will plug your second PC. If possible, it is best to connect from your second PC GPU. Otherwise, just use any available HDMI port on the second PC. The Type-C is used to console into the fuser. This is utilized when you are doing EDID programming on the fuser. For initial setup, you do not have to plug into this port. And lastly, we have the power port. Shockingly, like before, you plug the power cable into this port. For my own convenience, I will be using some HDMI cables I have already ran. These cables are similar spec to the ones included. As you can see, they are 2.04K cables. The specifications of the setup I am using in this video will be on the screen. Generally, if you want to run high refresh rate settings, you will need capable hardware as well as EDID programming. At the moment, this fuser is running out of the box software. Begin by making sure your connected computers are turned on. Then turn on the fuser itself. If the fuser is seeing your input devices correctly, H1 and H2 will light up green. Now we are here on my second PC. The fuser defaulted my resolution to 1920-1080. You can verify this sometimes if the resolution settings appear in the top left screen. We are going to check the display settings in Windows to verify. Now I am going to do a little functions test with the overlay intensity. Using the K2 button that I am currently caressing, I am going to gently press it many times and cycle through the RGB strengths. As you can see, with the higher settings, my second PC display is starting to disappear. Isn't that just so beautiful? Now we are going to test the intensity reset by pressing the K3 button. 
So like the pro gamer that I am known to be, I would prefer to play on 2K144. So using the K1 button, I am going to switch resolutions until I get to this mode. As you can see, the main PC is working just fine at 2K144. However, the second PC is limited to 60 Hz. Inside the refresh rate options, you can see that the highest option is 120 Hz. While this may seem like a GG situation, this is actually light work for the Dutch Infuser. To resolve this issue, we are going to do some mastery EDID programming. To get started with EDID programming, remove all HDMI cables from the fuser. Plug any Type-C USB cable into the Type-C port. Plug the other end into your main PC. Then plug your main PC GPU into your main monitor with an HDMI cable. Lastly, plug the power cable into the fuser and turn it on. The downloads for the software being used here can be found in the written guide. The link to that guide is in the video description. Firstly, right-click on the Windows button and then open Device Manager. In Device Manager, open the Ports section and verify you have the USB Serial CH340 device. Next, we are going to run the CH340 driver installer and install the driver for the serial. Next, we need to install the Monitor Asset Manager software. Run the installer and click through the installation steps. Uncheck the Run Mon Info box and click Finish. Now we are going to ensure the display settings are set to our target resolution and refresh rate. As you can see, I am running on 1440 at 144 hertz. Absolutely beautiful. Next, we are going to open Mon Info on the desktop. This may take some time to load. Within Mon Info, we are going to click File, then click Save As. Now choose the location and the name of where you want to save your .bin file. Next will be the Flash tool. Before we run the Flash tool, I want to make it aware that there is a naughty version of this tool floating around. If you are not using the downloads from our website, it is recommended to do a virus scan of the Flash tool application that you have. As you can see, all of my antivirus settings are enabled and the Flash tool is not being flagged for anything. This means we are Gucci. Let's continue. First, select the COM port of the CH340 serial device. This can be verified in Device Manager. Our target resolution is 1440, so we are going to select that option. Select the option to the right in the next section to enable the directory box. Then click the button to the right of the white box to bring up Windows Explorer. Locate and double-click the file you saved from Moninfo earlier. Click the top right button shown to flash the fuser. If successful, the blue light inside of your fuser will flash once. You will also get the chicken scratch message shown here. At this point, you can power off the fuser and remove the Type-C cable. Plug your main PC, second PC, and output HDMI cables back up like before. Then power the fuser back on. Back in the display settings for Windows on the second PC, we are going to check if we can now go to 140-44 Hz. It appears that we, in fact, are Gucci. The main and second PC are now running at 1440 and 144 Hz. The fuser is shown as the main monitor. This concludes the basic setup for the Daikin 6th generation fuser. On the written version, you will find a few additional troubleshooting steps that were not covered in the video. Please reach out to us if you need any assistance. Happy Gooning!